A series of senior government officials have spent the past two days testifying at a parliamentary committee about allegations of Chinese meddling in Canada's elections. Let's walk through what we heard. First today, the Commissioner of Canada's elections says her office is looking into reports of foreign interference. This review is ongoing as I speak to determine whether there's any tangible evidence of wrongdoing under the Canada Elections Act. So much of this controversy is fueled by leaks connected to the Canadian Security Intelligence Service. Well, today, the head of CSIS said foreign interference did not affect the outcome of the last two elections. And he confirmed that CSIS is investigating who leaked the intel to the media, saying those leaks are damaging to national security. The bread and butter of, of, uh, of an intelligence organization is our ability to collect secrets and, and uh, keep secrets. When that ability is threatened, uh, it undermines the confidence of our partners domestically and internationally. Meanwhile, the RCMP says in spite of the shocking allegations revealed in these media reports, there are no criminal investigations because the information didn't meet the bar. We did not receive any actionable intelligence uh, that would warrant us to initiate a criminal investigation. And finally, a warning from a senior deputy minister and former advisor to the prime minister that allegations based on unconfirmed intelligence should not be taken as fact. Intelligence is not truth. It, it, it's not, and it is often inaccurate or partial or incomplete or in fact designed to throw us off our track. Okay, there's a lot to talk about on the show tonight. Let's begin with MPs. As an Ontario Liberal MP who is on the committee, Michael Barrett is the Conservative ethics critic and Daniel Blakey is the NDP Democratic reform critic. Uh, thank you all uh, for joining me. Thank you for having us on, David. Uh, Mr. Barrett, I'd like to start with you, if I could. Uh, we've seen a lot of assurances at the committee over the last two days from senior officials who have seen all of the intelligence or have access to all of the intelligence who say that there was no meaningful interference in the election, yet you're persisting on, on wanting an inquiry. Why not take the word of the people who have seen all of the evidence and are in charge of our national security? I think we've heard from a number of people who, uh, who agree that there needs to be a deeper look at this. And uh, when we're talking about safeguarding our democratic institutions, I think a full, thorough investigation and providing those answers to Canadians is essential. And we're seeing, uh, frankly, um, obstruction and obfuscation from the government and from government members, first of all, about what the prime minister knew and um, and what he did about what he knew, because the revelations that have come forward about, you know, the the actors from you know the Beijing's Communist Party uh, interfering in our election, um, we need we need more than just assurances by some when we have assertions by others that, that this took place. But those assertions, it's sir, are an incomplete picture based on the testimony we've heard, that they are uncorroborated intelligence, they could be incomplete, and the head of CSIS and others who see the total picture say that you shouldn't necessarily take these reports at face value. What's your reaction to that? Well, look, what we're not hearing from, from those individuals is that there shouldn't be investigations and inquiries. What they're they're describing is that there you know wasn't a meaningful or there there wasn't a level of interference that rose to a certain threshold um, that frankly uh, Canadians might not agree with with that that threshold and we have seen the reports in these right. uh, in these uh, stories and you know frankly uh, you know your colleagues in the media have have raised these concerns and presented it in such a in such a way that Canadians deserve credible answers to credible um, to credible allegations of, of foreign interference uh, you know like I said right. if if there's nothing to see here then certainly we shouldn't be seeing obstruction from government members on having people come before the committee and testify you know if we're being told that okay, I, I, the prime minister's chief of staff Miss Telford um, was briefed on this and the government's refusing to let her come forward to 
to committee, well, well why not? Well, yeah, why can't she come and tell Canadians? I just want to bring in Ruby Sahota here, if I can. Ms. Sahota, it's not just the Conservatives who are calling for an inquiry here. Jean-Pierre Kingsley has called for one. Richard Fadden has called for one. Jerry Butts has called for one. So I know there are limits on what the public can see because of the national security requirements. But when those kinds of people are calling for a deeper nonpartisan examination, why don't you think the, the, the government should give it to them? Well, David, first off, I want to say that, you know, I can understand that Canadians have concerns and our government and um, the Liberal members on the Committee of Procedure and House Affairs that's discussing this issue but right now take those concerns very seriously. We take foreign interference very seriously. And your question as to uh, whether the Conservatives and others are calling for a public inquiry, I would have to say that they're calling for very different public inquiries. Right now, in committee, what we're seeing from or what we're hearing from the Conservatives is that they're trying to gut uh, the ask uh, a motion that's been put forward by the NDP to call for a public inquiry by limiting it. What we're hearing from the public is that they're overall concerned about our democratic institutions. And so you've mentioned we've had many um, witnesses before our committee at PROC and all of those witnesses, all high level officials from our security agencies to our deputy ministers and ministers are also coming forward next week as well. We've been hearing the evidence and I think we have a lot of great recommendations to put forward to build on the work that our government's already been doing. We've already strengthened our Elections Act. We've um, taken measures to also strengthen the National Security Act. We have a committee oh, of national... I'm, I'm, aware, I'm aware of all of that, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but we're, we're so just... So many things that have been done. Nope. And I have to say, David, the report that's been put out by uh, Mr. Rosenberg just now, that is uh, a, pro a protocol unit that's been created by our government so that there is impartial oversight to elections so that they can um, look at these things. We have a commissioner that investigates. We have the RCMP. And all of them have said that there is no interference that has risen to the point of actually uh, changing the integrity of our election. So I think that is so important to know. And, and I understand that. And no one is actually disputing the, the results of the past election. It's just a question of, of, of whether the reaction to this by the government was appropriate and really what are the changes that need to be made for future elections as this intensifies. And so regardless of what is being debated at the committee, because politicians are going to do politics at these things, there are eminent Canadians who are saying it needs to be taken out of the hands of parliamentarians and put in the hands of, of, a, of an eminent, another eminent Canadian to lead this. Why are you, the, the Liberals, so opposed to doing that when there are serious, credible people calling for it who aren't partisan in this at all? Well, we've heard from um, Jody Thomas yesterday. We've heard from many officials that uh, it's as difficult as it is for us to even get um, information from uh, many of the questions that we're asking them. It's the same type of public forum that you would have at a national inquiry. There is sensitive information here that just cannot be revealed through that type of a public forum. But Justice but Rouleau was given secret information, right? right? Justice Rouleau was given secret information, and, and your government seemed quite content to live with his verdict that the threshold was met on the Emergencies Act. Why not a similar process with a former Supreme Court judge or another judge who could have similar security clearance to assess these things and render a verdict? Well, the report that you just saw come out the other day, the Critical Election Incident Public Report, they were all given uh, top security information. They reviewed all of that information and that oversight task force has been created for this very reason. So I think we are duplicating work that's already being done and that our government has put forward in, in many different places so that we can have secure elections. And I'm not saying, David, by any means that, you know, we've done it all. Right. I'm saying that there are recommendations coming forward and we are uh, more than happy in our committee to recommend those things so that we can, our government can then strengthen these institutions even more uh, for the years to come because we know foreign interfer interference is not a new thing right. and it probably won't end tomorrow either. So we need to continue to work on this, but I think we need to be so careful with this sensitive information because uh, I think Canadians are seeing that people are being divided on this issue and that might be exactly uh, exactly what uh, other foreign state actors are looking to do. Okay, I want to bring in Mr. Blakey. Mr. Blakey, I don't know if this is going to divide the NDP and the Liberals, uh, but it seems to me you are in a position as a party to flex some serious muscles here as a, a partner in the confidence and supply agreement if you don't get this public inquiry you're looking for into the election integrity issue. Uh, how far is the NDP caucus prepared to push this to get the inquiry you're looking for? Because it doesn't sound like the Liberals are going to give it willingly. 
Well, I think what you see at committee right now is an effort by New Democrats and other opposition parties to push for a public inquiry, because for all the reasons that you mentioned, others have said we need a public inquiry. We do. I mean, one of the things about foreign interference that that is so uh, that is so troubling is that, um, and I think it is important to say, like we are hearing that you know, no one is calling to question the results of the election over this. But people want to have confidence that going forward that these things are going to take be, be taken seriously and that they're going to be resolved properly and they're going to be followed up on. And so some of the allegations from the last week, for instance, that, you know, uh, folks close to the prime minister, if not the prime minister himself, were, were briefed about this, uh, about some of this potential foreign interference around some of their candidates is is cause for concern. And I think what we're seeing at committee this week is just an example of why a lot of Canadians don't have confidence in politicians to uh, prosecute themselves in this regard. Right. And and we're at a point where I think the just trust us answer isn't going to do it for uh, Canadians. And so like we know that we're at a time where there's a high level of a lack of confidence in public institutions. So that's why the public inquiry makes a lot of sense. I think we should get it out of the arena of partisan battling, and we should have someone uh, look into this that Canadians can have some confidence in that is going to be rendering a nonpartisan verdict, having seen all of the evidence. And, you know, I mean, you, you do need a certain security clearance in order to be able to review all of the evidence. There are people in Canada that can do that job. You mentioned a, a precedent of having just done that on another important issue that involved national security. So this is something that can be done, but it's not going to be okay. kind of done in the theater of, of, a, of, a, of a parliamentary committee. Well, this is what I want to jump in. I, I mean, everyone's trying to get a motion amended and passed and resolved and voted on at PROC. It doesn't seem like you're going to get a public inquiry out of PROC because it doesn't have that capacity. That's the shorthand for the committee that's looking at it. But Mr. Singh meets with the Prime Minister on a regular basis, Mr. Blakey. This seems like an opportunity for the NDP leader to, to use the, the, the power he has from that agreement. Do you think your leader is prepared to do that if this is as fundamental an issue as you seem to say it is? Well, as I say, I think you'll find that New Democrats are a fierce advocate when it comes to having a public inquiry on this topic. But we're also, I mean, part of one of the reasons we want a public inquiry is because we want to see a responsible approach to contentious issues. So going out and issuing, uh, you know, threats about triggering an election right in the middle of a lot of speculation about how foreign interference threats are handled during elections, does it seems more like a way of playing into some of the political theater that we're seeing at committee. When New Democrats want to be a voice uh, to, to try and, you know, uh, lower some of, the, uh, some, of the, some of the really partisan rhetoric around these things and get to a solution. An election isn't a solution to problems around election interference when there's still a lot of un unanswered questions. So we're going to be pushing in every forum that we have at our disposal to try and get this public inquiry. And we're going to continue, despite uh, people egging us on to be hyperbolic about it, we're going to continue to just push persistently to uh, have grown-up voices prevail in the room and, and get these questions into a forum where they can be answered in a way that Canadians have confidence in. I mean, we may be able to answer questions to our satisfaction as politicians around the uh, committee table, but the question is whether or not whatever recommendations come out of that parliamentary study, whether those are going to be satisfactory to 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 uh, Canadians, and I'm not sure they will, which okay. is why the public inquiry is important, and it's why we'll be pushing for it at every table, and, I, and, and I'm, I'm sure that this is something that will be a topic of conversation. Okay, you make an excellent Mr. point about the irresponsibility of plunging the country into an election while we're trying to figure out how our elections are being meddled in. We're out of time. I'm going to have to leave it there. I want to thank you so much for joining me with the committee still on the go. Ruby Zahoda, Michael Barrett, Daniel Blakey, thanks so much.